Hey folks, welcome back to the Horde. So it is Thursday, January 2nd. It's about 60 degrees over there by the TV, and you guys could see it's about a quarter to four. Even on that one up there. So what am I up to? A little warmer over here. Well, I'm downstairs in the basement and I'm supposed to be putting together this whole CDI unit but I guess my ADD got the best of me and I got distracted and now I'm shooting a video um if you guys have been uh, following some of my um, comments I've been um, having a going uh, chatting with uh, William Staten S-T-A-T-E-N William anyway uh, he seems to do a lot of cool things on his channel. He's got a couple, like three videos that are fairly old, a year old. Then he's got a bunch of newer stuff. And one of the videos he put on there was about wiring up one of these uh, DC CDIs. And you'll see discussions between he and I um, uh, about will it work with this and will it work with that and so forth. Well, the last video he made... He says he doesn't have all that much experience behind the CDI cover. And um, the other reason, parental guidance, that I wanted to make this video is I wanted to say head over and over and over again. So, this is a $50 eBay head and cylinder. And I think there's a piston in here too, assembly. So, I got to say head once. And there's the CDI cover. And remember, um, be careful um, with the word head and CDI together. Anyway, so there's the cover. What's behind the cover? This is the thing I keep calling a Hall effect. And it may or may not be a Hall effect. I have to look up Hall effect um, on... Um, YouTube, Wikipedia, and, and make sure my definition is what I think the definition is. Um, and I'll show you what one does in a moment. But anyway, so this is the cam that runs the valves. This is overhead valve, right? And um, let me take, finish taking it apart. Anyway, this thing here comes off right so basically this transducer or sensor is the same thing one would see down here on the flywheel down here on the flywheel um, so cover then this then this guy slides right out and this is a mechanical advance unit now what happens is, as this thing goes around faster and faster, these weights fly out. And when they fly out, let's see if I could show it to you in such a way that you could see it. As they fly out, right, that's outward. You see it advances the timing, right? So as you're looking at this, see the weight fly out, right? This, That right there is the weight. See how it moves to the stop, right? To the stop, to the stop. That is advancing the timing. That's mechanical advance. And I guess um, somebody made a comment that these things advance, what was it, 20, 15 to 20 degrees with this advance here. The electronic guys, these guys here, I'm not exactly sure about this one in particular, but I see some of them advance as much as 30 degrees. Now my problem is, if I slam this guy that has an advance of as much as 30 degrees with something that does 15 to 25 degrees right here, everything should be okay when the engine first starts, right? because nothing is advancing. The centrifugal weights are not forcing outward and this guy doesn't start advancing until a thousand RPM. But as I start approaching a thousand RPM this guy advances and this guy electronically advances which eventually puts the spark too far out front. 
And what happened is the piston will be coming up on the compression stroke and the spark will go off, right? And if the stoichiometry, if the chemistry is just right, what could happen is before the cylinder gets all the way to the top, it could fire, which actually is beginning to slow the motor down, right? You have the inertia of flying around the meadow, um, moving you forward, right? And suddenly, as this thing advances more and more, as, you're, as the engine's running faster and faster, gradually the, um, the, the timing makes it so that the uh, cylinder is firing, the spark plug's firing, and once again, the cylinder's being pushed down before it's made it all the way to the top and uh, comes back around for, for the um, power stroke. So, anyway, just one more time. You can see centrifugally, as this thing goes faster, right, that weight would fly out. Um, this is defective. There's supposed to be springs on there. See, between that hole and that hole, right, there's supposed to be springs. And that spring should hold it like that. Then as you go faster, right, the spring stretches and it comes out just like a centrifugal clutch. So you have that. Now, about the Hall effect. I'm going to try to do this one-handed, right, one-handed man. That's uh, the fabled one-handed man. And this is going to be difficult. I have this on current. Is one of those Harbor Freight free meters and it's on 200 milliamp milliamps and if you look at it as this is going to really be interesting because the magnet's going to want to stick to this but anyway here's the little oops there's the little sensor right there and as I kind of go by this you can see that I'm inducing if I was able to do it better. Let me take it down a range. Anyway, hopefully you can see I'm inducing a current. By the the um, so and what that current does is it triggers the CDI. And in the case of this CDI, it's got a little circuit in here that charges up a capacitor that um, runs off of 12 volts DC and when it triggers this thing goes by see if I can do it better I'm doing it I mean you guys could see numbers go by but anyway that current that is induced on this guy triggers this guy and sends a bunch a charge over to this guy and this guy steps it up and you end up with a nice fat spark comes out the end here, which fires up your um, your ignition. So anyway, I hope um, for William this is uh, this is exciting. By the way, William uh, has done something that I've never had the nerve to do. He's got a video up where he uh, he shows a picture of an engine. Uh, ATC engine on a nightstand in a bedroom his bedroom so uh, I got to tell you my wife would about murder me for that so anyway I'm impressed I truly am impressed I've uh, I could get away with having my junk downstairs I can ha get away with having my junk out back in the two garages I would never ever get away with uh, my wife coming home and finding an engine on a uh, on a um, nightstand that would make her cranky. Anyway, um, this guy here, you could see it's got a little key here, and there's a little key in the cam. Hopefully, you guys could see that. See it there? Off to the left. That's what locks this to the cam to set your timing right now it's it's locked obviously um, this guy does not have a gear actually yeah there is a gear on it it's on the other side of this so 
depending on where the marks are, the timing marks are typically up here and there's a circle on here somewhere and the other timing marks you set your timing up when you put the engine together. Uh, setting your timing properly is kind of important for a couple of reasons. If you're only off a little bit, the engine won't start because you're not you're not putting the spark in the right place. If you're off more than a little bit, what could happen is your piston could come up and smash your valves that are now opening because they're not timed properly to the piston. And um, if that happens, then you get to put a new head on your uh, on your bike, and that's an expensive experience. So watch your timing. Um, the day is kind of getting long in the tooth here. It's almost four o'clock and I've been kind of fooling around with all this stuff all day finding parts and so forth I more or less have this is some heavy head here oh god um, I more or less have everything I need to put this together sitting here I don't need that to put this together um, this one doesn't appear to be good I checked it it's open circuit um, I got the little connectors that slide on and so forth. So it's just a matter of me paying attention. I got my wiring diagram here. I'll probably do that first thing tomorrow morning and get, get this put together. I'm uh, very quickly discovering. Um, I'm not convinced this one's any good. You saw I was able to do some, some current with it, but I'm the um, resistive value that you're supposed to get when you check these things it seems a little bit high once again this one is an open circuit so I'm beginning to think um, that I should I should keep my eyes open and get another couple of those when the when I could get a deal on eBay they have them in uh, two varieties they have well three varieties they have them as used as in uh, somebody else's problem and I think both of these are exactly that used in somebody else's problem that has now become my problem. Then they have them um, as um, new old stock, which is expensive. Um, and then, uh, though I'm not sure if they're, if Honda's still using these exactly, so they might even have new new stock. And then um, they have them as a clone as the uh, stuff from uh, China I've I don't think I've used the ones from China yet but I mean this is from China this is from China so what am I gonna suddenly become fussy about you know oh I want to use the Hall effects that aren't from China who knows maybe that's where Honda's getting them from these days alright folks I'm gonna let you all go we are getting snow I don't know how well you guys could see out there. Um, not much yet, maybe a couple of inches. So um, as near as I could tell from the weather report, we're supposed to get anywhere between 4 and 18 inches. And even though I've been keeping an eye on it for most of the day, that's as close as uh, they seem to be able to predict it, anywhere between 4 and 18 inches. So um, weather, weather report's a real big help. Okay, guys, live, love, and have a great time. Remember, keep your tires down, your handlebars up. We'll see you on the next episode of The Horde. Until then, um, you know, have fun. Go play in the snow. Bye now.